In the European economic race, Spain is quickly outpacing its neighbours. The IMF says it's Spain's GDP will grow 2.9 percent, best one of three, and it puts it well ahead of the eurozone and on par with the United States. Tourism has a lot to do with this growth and at the same time has sparked plenty of unrest. This weekend, for instance, in the Canary Islands, where the latest to denounce mass tourism. They claim it hurts the housing market and the environment. The double-edged sword that our next guest is only too well aware of, the Spanish economy minister, is Carlos Cuerpel. He joins me now from Washington. It is a double-edged sword, isn't it, minister? Because you, your tourism is such a fundamental part of Spain's economy, but at the same time, uh, it faces the greatest challenges of over-tourism and climate. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, first, let me put a bit of context into these excellent figures of Spanish growth uh, going forward. You said it yourself, the IMF is forcing Spain to lead over the euro area, not only in 2024, but also looking forward. So in the medium term, we will also be outpacing our main neighbors. And these are actually excellent news for the Spanish economy and for the interest it can yield in terms of uh, investors. Uh, but when it comes to the main determinants, tourism or the external sector is one. But just let me give you uh, another figure, which is non-tourism services, which are services for firms, high value added services. They amount to around 100 billion euros, while tourism amounts to around 90 billion. So it's not just tourism. Tourism is an important right. factor, but it's not just that. Looking at your exports, for example, whether it be refined petroleum, olive oils, uh, medicines, manufactured goods. How concerned are you? You're in Washington. The election is in 10 days. I know you're not going to get involved in that. But if one particular candidate wins, you could expect to face tariffs, higher tariffs than if the other candidate wins. How worried are you? Well, uh, first let me say that uh, the U.S. is a natural ally of the EU and, of course, of Spain as well. Uh, what we expect is that irrespective of the result of the elections, we can maintain uh, this strategic alliance and these very close ties with respect to, uh, to the U.S. Of course, going forward, the EU has to find its own way uh, towards uh, this economic security agenda, but we hope that it's going to be hand in hand with the U.S., of course. This, the requirement for immigration and a labor force, mm -hmm. Spain is somewhat unique amongst your European colleagues in that you do require a, 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 a higher, to a sense, level of, of a workforce, of, of a migrant workforce. And I'm wondering whether you find yourself at odds with other European countries on the immigration question at the moment. Well, uh, I just have to say one specific word on that is that immigration is proving to be another very positive factor in our growth figures. We have seen that over the past few years and going forward, Spain, as other uh, adva advanced economies, will suffer from aging of our domestic population. And we will need to be able to maintain growth, constant flows of migration. We've been having around half a million uh, net migrants per year since 2021. And this has been, an, uh, as I said, a support for our growth figures. They're contributing also to the su sustainability of our uh, fiscal uh, figures as well. So they're being act uh, an active part of our great economic performance. So this is how we square out the circle as well. This, there is an endogenous, virtuous circle here between growth and the incoming of, of migrants, uh, which are actually producing and contributing to, uh, to our growth figures. Do you think Spain is the sort of the, the, the quiet sleeping giant almost? And it's not even sleeping anymore. It's sort of waking up. I mean, we always focus on, if you will, the big two, Germany and France. And then sort of Italy comes along because it sort of shambles along uh, with, with, with various government changes and blah, blah, blah. But Spain is actually one of the principal engines of growth within the EU that doesn't really get the full credit. Well, uh, as you said before, Spain will be the leading advanced economy in terms of growth in 2024. And uh, there is another element mm. which I think is a good proxy for the overall situation uh, now in Spain. Uh, when you look at 2023, we were the number one country in the world in terms of new greenfield investments, so new investment mm. projects in renewable energies. So Spain is really modernizing its economy with its green agenda as a key competitiveness vector going forward. And this is attracting a lot of interest, particularly when you couple it with a very good economic outlook. 
We need to talk more about this, sir, but I think we'd better off do it in Madrid or somewhere nice in Spain where we can chew over uh, these good economic numbers. I'm sure you agree. Look forward to doing that in the future, sir. Thank of you. Of course. You're more than invited. Thank you very much. Thank you.